UFC 299, and if you stick around to the end of the video, we're going to be smoking that bookie pack because we have robbed them blind again. It was a big card, exciting fights, I had a ton of fun, and we cashed some big tickets, especially the ones that in the comments, on Twitter, on here, on everywhere, on Twitch, everybody, oh, you're going with Blade, you're going with Poirier, we, well, we're going to get into that. I'm going to break down a little quick recap of all the fights, telling you how I made what I did on these fights. Hope you guys cashed with me. I love seeing... I Honestly, I get more hype when you guys send me screenshots of the money y'all made cashing with me than my own bets. Believe it or not. You might not believe that. I'm telling you, when I get it, I get more hyped than on my own bets. Let's get into it. First... Oh, and shout out to Myth in the comments. I got the dark reader to save y'all's eyes. Appreciate y'all. Let's get into the first fight of the night. First off, we had Joanne Wood... We had the OnlyFans fade versus the retirement fade. The retirement fade wins out. Joanne Wood uh, mixes it up. We knew she had a shot to win this by decision. Just throws a little bit more. Can wrestle herself a little bit. Marina Moreau's good jujitsu, but doesn't have great wrestling. Joanne Wood just outworked her a little bit. It was a close fight. It was a competitive fight. But Joanne able to get it done. Um, gets the win and moves on to the... Uh, Probably a new stage, probably done. I mean, you never know with these fighters if they're going to really be done. But, you know, good to see her go out with a win. She's been fighting for a long time. Um, had a good performance. So, shout out to Joanne Wood. Good job. Next up, we had Asu Almabayev. CJ Vergara misses weight. It's like his third time missing weight. Um, he's probably getting cut, especially because he lost this fight. Uh, he was tough, though. Tough to finish. Um, stuck it in. Stuck out there, you know. Durable. Uh, was able to kind of hold his own in the grappling. But in the end, the right guy won, Asu Amabayev. Not the most exciting fight on the card to start off those first two. But we got pretty exciting in the next one, as we knew it would. Um, Almabaya, or I mean, uh, Rebellus to Spain versus Josh Parisian. Rebellus, his, oh, he had he came into the fight 4-0, and all four fights. like Or three of the four, like under 10 seconds, and then one was a couple minutes. And he gets it done in 18 seconds. Josh, Pre Josh Parisian, or Despain goes to throw a kick, falls off balance. And then we got uh, Josh Parisian tried to rush forward because he knew his only chance was some fluky way to get on top. He doesn't have great wrestling, um, and he wasn't going to be able to stick it out on the feet. And sure enough, he charges forward, gets clipped, gets finished. Good stoppage by the referee because he was about to get DK Donkey Kong. Uh Rebels gets the win, as I figured it would, but no bets. Then we move into the betting portion of the card. Michelle Pereira versus Mikhail Olazechuk. It seemed like I was, me and Johnny K, some of the only guys I, I ever saw out of the cappers I know that were on Michelle Pereira. Everybody thought that Mikhail was going to take over with the body work. It was actually Pereira with the body work. Uh, land some nasty shots of the body with the kicks. I think, like, I think he landed a punch or two to the body as well. I mean, it was only a minute long, but... Then you see Olazechuk just really hurt to the body. I don't know if he had some sort of injury, but uh, um, I was I was watching out of Buffalo Wild Wings, so it got a little crazy. But uh, uh, Pereira sinks in the ring of choke, finishes them. I cash, minus 150. Um, start off strong. We move on to the next fight. I thought all week about putting some on lens. I picked him as an underdog to win, but no bet. I just thought it was such a low level. It was going to be a close decision if if. They didn't get a first-round finish. And sure enough, Linz wins. He was the rightful winner, in my opinion. Kudalaba was coming forward, but he wasn't doing much with the, uh, with the takedowns he was able to get. Or with the takedown, I think it was, that he was able to get. Uh, just working for the wrestling a lot. Not able to get a lot from it. Felipe Linz wins. Um, kicking myself a little bit for not putting some on as an underdog. But at the end of the day, it was a lower-level fight. I knew it was going to be dicey, so at the end of the day, I'm not mad at myself. Linz gets it done, though. Next up, we I, I picked Kyler Phillips by decision, but no bet. Um, I promise you, as if you've been if you've been around here this week, the second half of the card a lot more bets. But this early portion, I just saw Kyler Phillips. I fi fig figured Phillips would outwork him to a decision. Munoz so tough, he's not going to get finished. But in the end, gets it done. Good win. Um, hurt Pedro maybe a little bit a couple times, but. Pedro just so durable, so tough, um, you know, stuck in there, but it, it was a good fight, Phillips did what he should do, got the win, no bet, you know, wasn't as mad about not betting that one as a Philip, but Felipe Lenz fight, but at the end of the day, all good with it, um, you know, we'll see what's next for Kyler Phillips, he is young, um, 
you know, I, I think he he does have potential. So let's move on to the next one. We had Gamra versus RDA. Man, RDA is he's a scrappy vet, man. He's stuck in there and he had a couple decent moments. He made Gamera out work, but in the end, it went how I figured he would. I had Gamera out in the parlay. I got him plus 104 with Sean O'Malley. Or a couple weeks ago was the first bet on the card I, I made. I always try to snipe out my... If I'm going to make a parlay, y'all know I'm not a big parlay guy, but when I do them, I like to snipe them early with my you know most confident picks. I don't really like to parlay a ton of over-unders because um, you just... I'm never as confident in those, but I knew Gamera was my most confident pick on the card. I'm not gonna lie, it was a little, it got a little dicey a couple times, but he was just, you give him size, you give him wrestling. RDA just has always had trouble with that style. So Gamrod able to wrestle him, gets the win, cashed my first leg of my parlay. We move on to one of the only bets that I did not cash on the on this card, as my cat's just going nuts in the background. Macy Barber versus Kayla Jukagian, aka Sir Minara. Uh, Macy Barber, you know, great performance. I figured she should, I, I thought she should be the favorite. I just didn't think it should be as, as heavy as it was. I thought it, it was going to go to decision. So plus 265 on Caitlin by decision. I was happy with that. In the end, the rightful winner won. Macy, Macy Barber, she landed the better shots. Um, had some decent groundwork as well. She was the better fighter. So played out how it should. I wasn't mad about it. At the end of the day, plus 265, you got to take stabs like that. It went to decision as I figured it would, but the other guy, the other girl won. So congrats to Macy. She's young. She's got potential. I like her fight style. We move on to one of the ones I got the most flack for for taking. I had Curtis Blades. I had a lot of money riding on him. Uh, I think this was my biggest bet of the night. Um, Curtis Blades versus Jailton Almeida. He was a slight underdog. I I, uh, I actually didn't get him as an underdog. I got him at minus 107, but I was happy at that. Um, I just thought he was the more well-rounded guy, and people are like, oh, Jailton, he made a mistake. No, like... He had to get desperate with the takedowns. He wasn't going to sit there and strike at the end of the second, third round uh, you know, um, with Blades. He wanted to go out there and just put him on his back. And that that's just how Almeida fights. People are acting like he doesn't do this every fight. He goes out there and desperately tries to wrestle. No knock on him. That's his style. I'd rather that than when you're a, re- you know, a straight wrestler and you're going out there and not fighting to your strengths. I just thought, you know, yeah, he put weight on. But is that just going to make him slow down more? Because... Blades a real heavyweight. Jailton is, yeah, he has got some special strength and conditioning, but he's not really a heavyweight. I mean, he's jacked to the gills, but he, I mean, he can, he can be a heavyweight, but like you got to build into that frame over time. Obviously, he was jacked. He was huge. He didn't make Blades look. I mean, they they look the same size, but at the end of the day, like when you rush, put that weight on. I don't know if it's gonna help you, and he's already had a gas tank problem, so. Blades takes over. Almeida gets desperate on that single leg because he don't want to be on the feet with Blades. Blades elbows his head in, gets the finish. DX suck it. We move on. We cash in. Next up, speaking of cash in, we had Piotr Jan versus Song Yadong. The first round was tough. I knew the first round would be tough. Jan's built for five rounds. That was my biggest, the, the biggest doubt in my mind. The biggest worry was Jan starting off too slow. He did start a little slow. Song won the first round on my card. Um... But he just took over as the fight went on. He's just the more technical striker, song, big, athletic, big power. But Piotr Jan just, man, y'all must have forgot. You could argue his only real loss is that Marab loss. I mean, the second Aljo fight was a little, it was super close. Could have went either way. And it's not like he took a bunch of damage. There was like one segment where Aljo was landing some good elbows. Um, and then the first Aljo fight, like we know what happened with that. Um, you know, um... At the end of the day, man, like, Jan's a great fighter. Um, Song Yadon is, too. He's got time. He's still young. But Jan's just a better guy. He was the rightful winner of that fight, second and third round. And we cashed uh, a solid little minus 115. So, uh, so far, so good. We move on. No bet on this one, but I picked Jack by TKO. It was dicey. I was tempted out of Gilbert Burns' sub, and that almost cashed a couple times. But in the end, Jack... Uh, was down on the scorecard, and then, what was it, like 90 seconds left, Gilbert Burns tries to shoot, eats a huge knee, and then Jack able to finish him with devastating ground and pound. Probably a late stoppage, but, um, you know, I think the ref knew, like, this dude's winning the fight, like, let me give him every chance he can, and he took some damage there. JDM's dangerous, man, that was a disgusting knee. We saw some knees later on in the fights, too, but, uh, 
Good win by Jack, man. He didn't give up. He kept fighting hard, and he was able to find the finish, man. Close fight, but Gilbert's a dog. He's no pushover. So congrats to JDM and JDM betters. GG. Next up, the only other uh, bet I missed besides Caitlin by decision, we had uh, Michael Venom Page taking on Kevin Holland. We did actually break even because I had the fight goes the distance, and I had Holland. And in the end, you know, I thought Page won the first, Holland won the second, and in the third, I think the offensive wrestling tired Holland out. He just didn't have a lot left. He was getting frustrated with the movement from Paige. He was getting frustrated with Paige just trying to counter the whole time. But at the end of the day, that's his style. I can't knock the guy. So Holland just didn't have a second answer. He didn't have the energy to continue wrestling. And he was just walking into shots. Paige was the quicker guy. And he was able to you know, dart, full, dart into range with big shots. Landed some big shots. Holland's got a chin on him, boy. I knew that, but damn. Uh, Paige wins the decision. We break even on that fight. We move on. Dustin Poirier, as almost a, he was a plus 185. Also, um, yeah, we cashed the fight goes the decision. And then we had here, we, we took Dustin Poirier at plus 185. And, um, yeah, man, um, the first round, he was jumping gillies. I think he jumped four guillotines, if you include the one in the finishing sequence. I was screaming in that Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, you just got to be careful pulling guillotines in high-level MMA, man. But he pulled a couple of them. He wound up on his back. He got out grappled because of it. But I was confident. He's a black belt. I was confident in his defense. I, I told y'all, if BSD, yeah, I think BSD will get him down. But is he just going to blow through him? Is he just going to steamroll him? No, he's not. He's not Khabib. He's not Charles Oliveira. He's good. He's a solid fighter. I'm not trying to kick him while he's down. Honestly, if it seems like I'm trying to kick a man while he's down, it's really just because the betters... I'm sorry, man. And a lot of my favorite cappers were on BSD. Everyone was on BSD. Every podcast I went on, I, I was I was in the chat. I'm the only one on Poirier. Every respected capper I know, for the most part, was on BSD. But I just said, he ain't Khabib, bro. He ain't Oliver. Ever oh, was the grappler the last time the grapplers? He ain't on the level of grappling that Khabib and Oliver are. So I thought he could take him down, but I, this is a five-round fight. You're not going to just lay on Dustin for five rounds, and I didn't think he was going to submit him because I haven't seen the submission threat be good, you know, somebody who is Khabib or Oliveira level. So I figured it was going to go like that. So I wasn't worried after the first round. I was like, you know, like he's using a lot of energy. And then sure enough, man, I, just, I started getting hype in that Buffalo Wild Wings. Luckily, everyone else was too because there's obvious a lot of Dustin fans there. But uh I saw BSD slowing down. His arms looked so heavy in the start of that third. And I was like, we got him. Because there's a striking advantage and a power advantage on for Dustin. And we got Benoit after the first round, arms already loose. He's trying to shake him out and, and it, you know, between exchanges. He was gassed. Dustin clips him a couple times. He almost pulls a ghillie and I was screaming in that Buffalo Wild Wings. Luckily, separation. Clips him, right hook drops him. He comes in with a devastating shot. We cash plus 185. DX chop to everyone. Oh, Blades and Dustin, they're both getting slept. Yeah, okay, buddy. Move on to the main event. We had Fight Goes the Distance. I hedged a little with late round props, a little sprinkles on Vera. Uh, three, four, five. But we had Fight Goes the Distance, and we had Sean as the second leg of our Gamrot parlay, the big money parlay. And uh, we cashed. Sean O'Malley put on a clinic. Vera had some moments. You know, he landed a couple good shots for sure. And even a body shot last five seconds of the fight. I think that actually hurt Sean a good bit. But overall, man, it was a clinic. It was a striking clinic. He came out in the pink shorts. And he was just twice as fast as Cheeto. He was landing at will. Cheeto took some shots. Dude, that knee, I think, in like the second round or third round. I mean, literally about knee Cheeto's head out of the freaking octagon. Uh, Cheeto's got a legendary chin. One of the him and Pedro Munoz got some of the best chins in MMA history. Them, John Jones, Mark Hunt, like, uh, yeah, Ivanov used to be a guy he just got finished, but you know, Sean was just so fast. He started finding his range, finding his rhythm. He was styling on Cheeto. Cheeto just not quick enough for Sean, man. And you know, the first fight I've been said it wasn't a fluke. It counts a win, but it was a little. Eh. Is that something that can be repeated? So, you know, it's borderline. 
You know, and, and I just thought Sean was a better fighter. It's going to play out on the feet. Marlon's not some wrestler. He typically gets wrestled. So it's going to be five minutes on the feet or five rounds on the feet. So Cheeto's got to catch him and knock him out or he's not going to win any of these rounds. Sure enough, he didn't win a round. 50-45, the rightful winner. Sean cashes my par my big money parlay with Gamron. And he cashes fight goes to the decision. We robbed the bookies blind. So for the bookies, I appreciate y'all. We eating good. My dog, my cats, they're all eating good. They're all eating steak tonight. There was some full violence on display. I appreciate you guys, man. <coughs> my betting video for this card was my most popular video I've ever done. I've been doing this for four years. So really, man, genuinely appreciate it. Even if I would have crashed and burned, I would have really appreciated you guys. But... We keep the momentum alive. We keep the streak alive. I really hope that a lot of you guys, if, if 3,600 of y'all watched, I hope 500 of y'all cashed something with me. So, appreciate you guys so much, man. I gained like 100 subscribers. Really, really appreciate that. I've been doing, I do this channel because I love it. I love talking fights. I love breaking them down. Obviously, I love gambling on it. It's a, my favorite part of the week is that Saturday night, so Really appreciate all the love, man. I would do this for free forever. I'm never going to ask for a dollar for you guys, for my picks, for my bets. I just want to do this, man. I just love doing it. So I really appreciate you guys who have been sticking with me for a long time. And even if you're new, welcome. You know, hope you make a bunch of money. Hope you made money on uh, yesterday, on Saturday. So appreciate you guys, man, for showing all the love. Let's keep it going. Let's keep making money. And uh, we got UFC 300 coming up. And, hey, I know the cards between it aren't UFC 299 and 300, but we're going to make some money. So enjoy. I will see you guys then. Make sure you click subscribe, like the video, put in the comments. Let me know what bets y'all cash, especially if you if you trailed me and cash them. That shit makes my day, man. I really appreciate you guys, and I will see you in a couple days for my breakdown for uh, UFC Vegas 88, is it? I appreciate you. Love y'all. See you then. Peace.